Most boss fights include actual, you know, fighting with the and the and the you know? However, some bosses are impossible to punch, kick, or blast your way through, meaning that the only way you can survive is by legging it as fast as you can and hoping that the big nasty doesn't catch up with you. At least not until you can maybe actually fight back. Here then are the bosses that forced us to run like the wind, if the wind was also whimpering with fear and weeing a little bit. Along the way, beware spoilers for the following. Luchadors are strong and skilled athletes, however even they might have a hard time beating up something the size of four London buses. So when you come across Alabrije while playing 2D platformer brawler Guacamele, your best bet is for you and your mask to get out of there pronto. Not only is this monster huge, but it's covered with more spikes than a particularly enthusiastic Sonic fan art. However, you can't just parkour from him and his many, many, many teeth. So many! First off, you'll need this unblinking nightmare monster to smash certain platforms to make a path for you. So you'll have to nervously wait at certain sections, getting dangerously close to those pointy gnashes. <laughs> Secondly, Guacamele has you travel between worlds, so you'll have to jump through portals in order to open up paths yourself, on top of smashing through skellies and blocks. Reach the Golden Axe at the end though, and that big old monster has the bridge disappear under him, plunging him into the lava below. This not only frees you from his terrifying chompers, but also awards you the achievement That's One Big Gatto Frito, which means fried cat. Turns out this thing was the pet of your nemesis, Carlos Calaca, and was named Alabrije after the Mexican folk art of brightly coloured fantastical creatures. Yeah, Carlos, I don't know what you think cats look like, but they usually have fewer teeth. <laughs> You're lagging! You're such a tourist! Lara Croft ends up running from a lot of things. Boulders, boulders, and boulders. I'm sensing a theme. But when facing non-boulder enemies, Lara has a way of dealing with them, or more accurately, two ways of dealing with them, her twin pistols. T-Rex, more like T-Wrecked, welcome to Jurassic Park, but you'll be dino sore stop, in the morning. Stop, Ellen. Never. But back in her younger days, Lara was armed with only her wits and her amazing core strength. In Tomb Raider Legend, on an excavation with her university colleagues in Peru, Lara and her friends dig up more than they bargained for, as a horrible demon smoke monster picks them off one by one. It's her! Wait! Kent! Q, frantic running as Lara must make her escape, and a chase sequence from the view of said horrible demon smoke monster. Yes, as if it wasn't stressful enough, you can see the creature's hands clawing their way towards you like someone put a GoPro on Satan. Whew, escaped. <laughs> And that was the end of that nightmare. I assume we'll never see that monster ever again. No! No! Bobby! Ah! Damn it. Okay, guys, maybe it's time to close the dig site.
Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is all about learning to beat brutally tough bosses. Working to perfect your sword combat technique as you die over and over, learning, refining, and improving, until finally, finally, you give up because life's too short, man. There is, however, one major Sekiro enemy you don't fight head on. Instead, you'll be relying on hiding and running like hell, both of which you'll be all too eager to do because, oh my god, that enemy is a giant bloody snake. The so-called Great Serpent, though I don't know what's so great about it, shows up several times in Sekiro. It can eventually be killed much later in a surprise attack if you make it that far, but for now your only hope is to flee from this slithering skyscraper-sized snake boss. The serpent uses a maze-like network of caves as it hunts for a shinobi snack, which means to keep yourself undigested, you must avoid its keen gaze and, more critically, avoid vomiting in terror. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Far from fighting the serpent fair and square, your only hope of victory here is making a break for the next bit of cover whenever the snake is pointing its great scaly face elsewhere, until eventually you're able to hide, then jab the great serpent in the eye when it least expects it. And if you thought you were on the run before, now it's really time to cheese it because, guys, snake is mad now, snake is mad now! Keep running, however, and you will finally make it to safety. A point to relax, restore some of that health, and just- ah! <laughs> Unravel's main character, Yanni, is cuter than a kitten in a Pikachu costume. Oh my god, I've just imagined it. <laughs> With his little woolen body and his gymnastic use of his trail of red yarn, he is super endearing. And you know what else is super endearing? Fuzzy Widow Animals! <laughs> so you would think that the combination of the two would be so sweet, you'd max out your sugar allowance for the next century. Unfortunately for Yanni though, most animals he meets want to pick him up and, well, do this. <laughs> One such animal is this angry gopher, who is going to regret messing with Yanni after breathing in a lungful of fungal spores. But don't celebrate your victory too soon, as this fuzzball pops up later, thirsty for vengeance in a chase sequence that, should you fail to get Yanni to safety, ends very badly. Viewers, be aware that this next sequence contains disturbing imagery. And if you've been affected by Gopher Attack, please call our Gopher Attack hotline. It's up to you to nail Unravel's yarn-swinging platforming in order to get our favourite bundle of red wool out of reach of this ravenous rodent. In the end, it's not until that Gopher falls into a pit that you're able to take a breath again and finally calm down. <laughs> oh, that was stressful! Still, at least we know that Yanni is safe and still as cute as a button. Oh my! Oh, what happened, Yanni? C can we do something about this? Oh, thank you. When you're in a life or death situation, it's important not to lose your head. Unless that head is a pyramid head, in which case do try to lose him, because that mother flipper is coming for you. The town of Silent Hill is stalked by awful creatures, including this angular-headed nightmare monster that you really don't want to run into down a long, dark corridor. But run into him down a long, dark corridor you do, or at least away from him as fast as you can, with panic-fueled adrenaline coursing through your veins and panic-fueled urine coursing through your trousers. Not helping the situation is that not only are you helpless, but you're also accompanied by useless pyramid head magnet Maria, who no matter how hard you scream run at the screen, doesn't pick up the pace. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried screaming at the screen, and it does not work, and my neighbours do not like it. As you can tell from the council noise order, shove it up your butts, Wisteria Cottage. Yeah, there's one of them now, always crying. What's more, you have to get to grips with the fixed camera that switches perspective every time you reach a corner. And then there's the way James handles like a tank with a missing tread. The upshot is, you'll be smashing his face into several walls in your rush to get away. 
Still, at least you both got away safely forever. I said run! Yeah, say it to my face, mate. To be vermin, you can't escape from me. In award-winning, life-affirming Pixar film and basically fine platforming game Ratatouille, Remy is an aspiring chef, albeit one who is a tiny rat. However, in his game, he ends up doing a lot of running instead, as it seems everyone is out to get him. Almost as if it's some kind of problem to have a rat in a restaurant kitchen. It is. It is? Yeah, Antonio? Yeah, shut it down. Yeah, shut it all down. Yeah, the rat. Apparently. I know! Well, hapless chef Linguini certainly knows this, so after he spots Remy when taking out the trash, a chase sequence ensues that leads them through the streets of Paris, City of Lights, and also trash and boxes. But that's not the only chef chasing Remy down. After discovering Remy in the kitchens, tiny terror Chef Skinner also runs Remy around in circles, across countertops and over burning hobs in a deadly chase of man and rat. I'll tell you what, in this kitchen they must keep all the cuts of beef on the top shelf because, you know, the stakes are high. <laughs> Luke, I'm gonna need you to clear your desk. You're leaving drinks for a four. Aww. Later, Skinner pursues Remy through a market and later still through the dining area of the restaurant. Geez, Skinner, at this point, is it really about the rat? What are you really chasing? <laughs> Look what you've done! Now you've got no rats and no restaurant! Like me! Oh, sorry. Antonio? Yeah, health inspectors are there. Anto do not let them in. Do Antonio, do not let them in. Do you want to go to prison? Whether you're getting shot at by a giant potato or crushed by a giant skeleton, Cuphead is all about taking down big bad bosses with his finger guns. Pew pew! Pew. <clears throat> However, there is one boss that you can't fight, and it's this great big cyclops. This brute moves at such a pace that any bullets you do fire would be useless even if they did do damage. So all you can do is run and jump across a tricky set of stone platforms, which this scary cyclopean keeps breaking with his massive hands. Or, to be fair, he might just be, you know, checking where they are with, you know, assumed lack of depth perception. Either way, the Cyclops is on your tail, destroying half the building with him, and, thanks to floating pyro head slowing you down, you can end up getting pretty close to his palms of pressure. Fortunately though, it seems that the Cyclops' feet aren't as steady as they could be, and he falls down just as you reach the end of the pit, allowing you to make your escape. Hey Cyclops, hope you enjoyed your trip. Guess you could say we gave you the Slip? <laughs> Did you pop your cyclogs? Yeah, Ellen, you're out of here as well. Just uh, pop all your belongings in there. We're going to roll your leaving drinks into Luke's. That way we only have to buy one cake. Well, we had some good times. Uh, you know, had a good run of it. Uh, and those were the times that you had a good run away from some bosses that you couldn't fight at that point. Uh, can you think of any more examples of when you had to like run away like that in a little chase sequence? If so, let us know in the comments. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, uh, then we've got some more... We've got some more videos uh, that you can watch. Um, up here is one from us that's about heartbreaking boss fights. Uh, it's the commenter edition though, so it's your suggestions. And then down here is one from outside Xbox, and that is all about uh, red shirts who were destined to never survive in space. And if you enjoyed this, then please subscribe. Taking this.